All right, everybody, this is Ross, the Fig Boss. I wanted to talk to you guys today about Fig Espaillés, or low cordons, Japanese Espaillés, or even just cordons in general, um, and how this all relates to the fig. The reason why I'm making this video is that we had a lot of people in a very recent video that we did, we talked about my older Espaillés peaches, we talked about my younger plums that we planted in the same style and trained in the same style, and then we talked about, well, why is it really such a great form for a lot of us in a backyard setting? I think espaillés have a great function. They're beautiful. Uh, overall, you could make an argument that for a lot of fruiting plants, there's a huge benefit to actually growing them uh, in this way. So I've actually have uh, some fig trees that were planted in this form as well, because I've realized that there probably is no better form for the fig tree is the espaillé. And I've been really trialing um, and messing with different things and tinkering with different things in regards to the amount of varieties I grow, but also to figure out, well, is the espalier better than a higher density planting with the fig tree? And I would just say in general, across the board, you don't really know, you know what you're doing. I would say the fig tree is probably the best. It's the easiest you're gonna get of course, good airflow, which is, may help with you guys down in the south for rust issues. Um, but the biggest thing with the fig tree in this form is that you can maximize the amount of light. The light penetration on these trees is phenomenal. Um, and they're so easy to set up, by the way. So if I you know, show you guys down here, we just have a main trunk that comes up from the base. And at a certain height, you make your cut. And then uh, the next following season, you get these long arms or cordons. And you let them grow out for that whole season. And at the end of the season, you guys can very easily just tie them down here to a wire. And that's exactly what I've done. There's nothing intricate, complicated about that. Now that we've established our form, we've actually started to see new growth on the arms. And as we've uh, as we know, really the basics of fruiting fig trees is that we really care quite, uh, we should care quite a lot about this new growth because the fruits are going to form on that new wood. And that's really what a cordon's about. It's kind of, you come back every year to these spurs where you keep coming back to that cordon and then essentially you're neglecting or you're completely eliminating the Breva crop. So that first crop on the old wood we pretty much non-existent if you grow them like this. However, you're gonna have some of the best main crop you can get, and especially in higher quantities if you do it like this. So that's what we're focused on is this new growth. And you know, I could really show you guys here, they've kind of just leafed out in every which way direction. And that's kind of what just fig trees do. You know, they as soon as they wake up, they love to put out a lot of branches, and a lot of those new branches are kind of actually a hindrance to the other branches. Uh, it's usually too dense. We have too many branches, especially in this uh, in this system here where I'm really growing them against the wall. If we had them more in an open setting and we had a double sided cordon where we could grow branches out this way and we could also grow branches out that way, it would be actually a nice thing that it's putting out so many branches along these arms. Uh, but for now, when we're doing this, in this way, I'll show it to you guys up close. Really need to be careful with the amount of fruiting branches that we have in such a small area. You know, right over here in this corner where the two trees meet, as I've cut them off at the ends, we have one, two, three, four, uh, five. We have five fruiting branches right in this little area. That's way too many. Uh, the big benefit of these cordon systems is that we get good light penetration, that this light can come in, hit these branches and actually form the fruits and do this really in a, a better manner than let's say a tree form where it can be really difficult to actually achieve that light penetration for some of us. So by doing this and leaving, let's say all of these branches in this clump in the corner, it's just not going to work out. It's not going to make sense. It doesn't make sense at all. We need to actually thin this out because in this one area should be one fruiting branch, not five. In fact, we're going to space them. And this is really the key. This is the critical thing of this entire video 
if you learn one thing, is that you really need to space these fruiting branches eight to 12 inches, maybe even a little bit further, depending on the variety. Each variety has their own genetics. I can't tell you what the light conditions are, what the genetics are that say, well, is it more adapted to a higher light condition or is it more adapted to a lower light condition? The lower light varieties, like things like Hardy Chicago, uh, you could say um, uh, Campaneri, probably even Ron de Bordeaux, you know, those are varieties that are kind of more adapted to lower light or cooler climate areas. The figs that like Panache I have here behind me and actually Colonel Littman's Black Cross, they're way more adapted to these higher light environments and they need a much further spacing of these fruiting branches. So if I were to space them eight inches, I'm probably not gonna get great fruit set. If I instead space the spurs and space the fruiting branches a foot, I'm gonna be much better off at ensuring myself some good fruit set. So that's what we're doing today, is that we're coming in here and we're doing something called thinning, where we're rubbing off the new branches. We are evaluating the spacing between the fruiting branches, we're making a judgment call, and we're actually rubbing off or even pruning off these new branches. 